everybody. Welcome for those joining us online and those who are here in, in class here. Uh, welcome to another members only office hours. This is training uh, time where any of our members of the government contractor, you can leave open a second. Any member of the government contractor association can come to class or join us online and ask any questions you want to. Uh, so this is your time. And as a member, you know, usually come ready with some questions to ask so we can all learn together. We do have, uh, you know, a few joining us online. Uh, and so for those joining us online, welcome. Uh, Andrea, I guess uh, I want to go ahead and start with you since you had a debrief today. So did you want to share a little about your debrief and talk about how that went and what, what went on there? Okay. Um, well, if you if you recall, last week Abe had given me the uh, instructions of how to um, get the debrief because I was communicating with them, but they were not returning my calls or anything like that. So he suggested that I would write an email to be able to track something that was in writing, and well, as to be nice and just to be cordial, and just to present myself as a learning opportunity was the reason why I wanted to speak with them. And that worked. <laughs> uh, the, next, <laughs> the next day, um, I did get a response from the... Oh, okay. Andre, one second. So Tom asked a question, what is a debrief? OK. A uh, debrief is a process that you are obliged to take part in with the contracting officers and the end users or whomever may be invited to the meeting after you submit a bid and you are not awarded the bid, you are not the winner, then you have the opportunity to contact that, that entity and ask them for a sit down, face to face sit down. So it's a guarantee opportunity for you to be able to talk with the contracting officer and whomever else may be in the room. So you have three days to ask for a debrief and they can give you a debrief either face-to-face, -face, by phone, by email, uh, and usually you want a face-to-face because that's where you can you know, get a real opportunity to build a relationship with them. Uh, so tell us about how, how it went today. Um, well, I think it went well. I felt like I was in the hot seat <laughs> because it was, it was four of them and um, one of okay. me. <laughs> And they were just all looking at me. Okay, okay, Miss Burnett. Okay, Andrea. Uh, what questions do you have? I was like, well. <laughs> so, um, but I just came forward and started asking them about some of the questions that I did have about how the solicitation went, because from my understanding of the of the bid opportunity, they were saying that the local small business enterprise uh, registered with the cab. Uh, it was required, that's the way that the solicitation read, that it's required that 20% would go to a local small business. And so um, when it was rewarded, it was not awarded to a local small business. However, there was another portion of the solicitation that said that if they show good faith effort of trying to find one, then you know that would be sufficient in order to uh, be responsive and responsible to the to the solicitation. Um, so they claim that they did uh, because I was questioning that because part of the requirements as far as finding the, your proof that you had really reached out to the local small businesses was to actually contact them. And me, uh, Powerhouse, being a local small business with DeKalb County, no one ever contacted me. So I felt that we were overlooked or, you know, we were not part of the proof that they had actually reached out. So that's what one thing that I was asking about, but they had, but they, sh they said that um, they had reached out to two others that I didn't even know existed. Uh, two other pest control companies registered with the cab that I wasn't even aware of. However, because of that situation, I was able to request an open records request to have the records open and to uh, actually receive a copy of the, the winning bid, all the documents that were su submitted and what have you. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, another, question, uh, another question that I had for them was that they were requiring that the 
winner of the bid would be local, have a local office in Atlanta, in the Atlanta area. However, when I was researching, you know, those that were participating in the bid opportunity, I did not find this company even registered in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Are they even registered as a vendor in Cap County? No, they were not registered as a vendor with DeKalb County. Um, and you know how I went to the Department of Agriculture, which has all of those pest control companies and registered employees who have license to do business in Georgia. And that yeah. company, nor any of the employees that I knew of, were registered in Georgia. Okay. So I found that to be interesting. So she's supposed to be supplying me, along with the open records request, um, proof that they are registered in Georgia, uh, that they do have a local office in Georgia, in Atlanta that is, and so we'll see how that comes along. Wow. But so it, it lasted you... about, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say it lasted, it lasted about 20 minutes, and um, I think it gave them something to think about because um, I don't the wording, because the wording in the solicitation was not according to the ordinance. <clears throat> because one of the, um, let's see, there was, I think she's called a deputy commissioner or interim deputy or something like that, yes. who oversees the, the bids or what have you. She was saying that the ordinance about the local small business is that if the, if the bid is over $50,000, then it's required for a local small business to participate. But that is not how the solicitation read. But, okay, so that's how that went. Okay, so did you ask them to reconsider, you know, re-awarding it to you? I did not ask them to re-award it to me. They said they were happy with uh, the person that they had and that my bid mm -hmm. was just high it was it was higher it was higher than the lowest bid and so okay so they went with the lowest bid how, how much higher were you um i believe it was uh about a thousand dollars over their bid That's not yeah and are they, are they is the other company a small business they are a small business however they are not a local small business with DeKalb county they're not okay, registered with the so Cap County. What was the total project size? Total project size. I mean, how many the how many buildings were going to be? I'm sorry. No, no. What was the bid amount? The bid amount. What was the bid? Amount? Yeah. Their bid amount, I believe, it was just over two thousand a month. Okay. And ours was over uh, was just over three thousand a month. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In that situation, they went with the lowest. Yeah, they went and with the lowest. So what, yeah. What's the name of the company? The one that, that won? won the bid. Uh, Pest Bureau. Bureau, like B-E-A-U-R. Correct. Pest Bureau. B-U-R-E-A-U. Yes. So let me do a quick search, see when, see if they're in Georgia. Yeah, they're not in Georgia. <laughs> B E U B U B U R E U, right? Okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Let's see if they're here. Pepper of Georgia. Melvin Jones is they're dissolved. What was that? In South Carolina. South Carolina, yeah. Is that the same company? That's the same one. But their status is dissolved. They're not even supposed to operate in Georgia. Yeah. What's up with that? See this here? They are, uh, there's a reason why they're dissolved, because they don't know how to bid on projects. Because they're bidding too low. Oh, okay, what do you, okay. Dissolved so, in 2015. So wow. Well, that's what it is. Yes. So they're not even active to be able to do business in Georgia. So, so you might want to take this information too. I uh, mean, you can you can play a hardball, but you know, or you can just say, hey, you know what? 
I'm just really concerned that this project here, this company, is not even licensed to do work in Georgia. And you guys, exactly. I'm a decap located business. I've got my LSB. I want to do work in DeKalb County. This is an out-of-state Georgia company. Uh, you guys didn't do your homework, and I'd like for you to reconsider awarding this to our company. Yeah, exactly. You can file a, you can file a formal pro uh, informal protest if you want. But if you... But the risk is they're going to think of you as a troublemaker in DeKalb County because DeKalb County is a small agency. And if you go down this path trying to, try to make a little bit of money, you might lose out in the big war of trying to make a lot of money long term with them. So, What's the, so from, my some, mm -hmm. uh, from my understanding, Abe, uh, what's going to happen is they're going to change the ordinance to read that if you are a local small business enterprise, and but yet you are not the lowest bidder, you would have the opportunity to match the lowest bid. Mm -hmm. But the, the way that this company bids, they bid so low, it's, it's not worth it. That's right. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's not, it's not <laughs> worth it. To, so we, would, we would pass on that anyway, so it's not worth it to... But this here part about them not being in Georgia, that's a big deal. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's the same company, Pastor of Georgia, I mean, it, it's black and white right here. They can't even go and get a rush today, but we've got a black and white. I'm going to send this over to you right now. That uh, that they're not real, you know, they're not even supposed to be operating in business, so. <laughs> now, the contracting officer, what they did was they just went with the lowest price. They didn't do any yeah. homework. They didn't do any investigation. They're just... No, no. Yeah, they're out in South Carolina. They're just trying to win a contract. They were looking for pest, pest control project. They said, oh, there's one in DeKalb County. And they bid on it, knowing that all their ducks are not in a row. I mean, they're a small business owner. They're not thinking, right? They're just like, hey, we, we got, there's the project opportunity. Let's go bid on it. And that's what they did. I'm a small business owner. And I, my numbers are not going to be known like that. You're, you're a smart business owner. That's right. <laughs> and Abe, also... Um, no one has ever called the camp out on this kind of thing. Well, maybe you should take a Well, I mean, I'm, I'm it's a double-edged sword. So you, 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 know, you, you do what you feel is going to be best for you. I can't tell you to do it or not to. I'm just giving, I'm providing you information so that you can use information to help you if you need to. Okay. Uh, but this company, you know, is uh, no longer active in Georgia to do business in Georgia. They were dissolved in 2015. So this is so this is a year later. Is that the town
we said, well, you know, this project's supposed to come up for bid. We're interested in this. Sir. So we called the agency up, uh, talked to the contract officer and said, hey, you know, we're just curious. You know, we're, we're really excited about doing work for you guys. We want to work with you into the future. But we were you know, excited about this one project. And all of a sudden, it, it was out for, you know, forbidden and it just disappeared. And the contract officer said, they knew we caught them red-handed, right? And so they said, oh, you know what, man, um, yeah, we have worked to this company, but, and we could have been mean and nasty about it and do a, a informal protest or even a formal protest. But we just said, yeah, yeah, you know what, things happen. So uh, the contract also looked at us and said, hey, we'll take care of you, you know, the next project. And we just took them at the work, and the next project came around, and, you know, they ended up still sourcing into the company. Right. So, so. So, so we kind of went that path. Now, I would say, uh, unless it's like a $3 million project, it's probably not worth it. Uh, if it's you know, a few thousand dollars a month, you, people make mistakes. I think they just they were just sloppy on putting this project out, and uh, but you caught them. And so, <laughs> I th you know, so it's up to you. All right, thank you. You can do a, a informal uh, protest so that they can learn the lesson. Uh, but totally up to you. So, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute you just in case. Um, but uh, any other questions? Anybody here? Questions about anything? Um, I have a question. But okay. That, that I used to run into that a lot. Yeah. You know, on on the small, especially RFQs, mm -hmm. where the contracting officer, you know, I put it this way, in North Virginia, I had this huge account, and my Contact person was so, you know what they would do to keep me? He would say, okay, I need three people, but what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to say, I like this company. Mm -hmm. he, he, he would write a whole movie out of her. Mm -hmm. And that was it. He would say, and their product is this, this, that, this, that, mm -hmm. this. Yeah. And that was it. And then I had an RFQ where, as I did it, and the contractor, everybody did it, and then it says, contact buyer for information. You know what they did? Same thing he did. Well, we just kept what we wanted, you know, because they, they, you know, they do, the, especially on small stuff, they do that stuff on small yeah. stuff, really they do. But I do have a question, mm -hmm. not not to into this. Okay. Yeah. okay, what does... What's the purpose of a supply letter? A supply letter? What do you mean by that? Um, um, when you have, like, say for instance, you have your suppliers. Mm -hmm. A letter of supply, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. And you want them to give you a letter of supply saying that we need a different kind of pricing. Are you familiar with that? From the, from the agency? Mm -hmm. From the manufacturer. Because I say that because this is what this is one of my assignments from, from Mark. Mm -hmm. Is to get a letter of supply. And a lot of those guys know what they're talking about. So so you're saying that you have a agency uh, someone that wants to buy from you, and they no. want you to go get a letter of supply. No, I have manufacturers. Yes. I'm a reseller distributor. Okay. My prices that they normally give me on products, mm -hmm. are, you, I could never, ever quote mm -hmm. on, it'll compete. Yeah. So I guess this letter of supply gives me lower prices, mm -hmm. I guess. That's why I'm asking. Have you heard of that? That's, yeah, that's kind of unique to your industry, and uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. That's an assignment that I'm, I have. Okay. And um, so, let's see. Anyway, mm -hmm. but yeah, I wanted to know what, what that was all about, a letter of supply. Um, I kind of understand it now, but I, I allow uh, my mentor to speak with one of my suppliers, I wanted them to talk. Mm -hmm. I was going to do a three-way. Yeah. They were supposed to talk on 
on Monday. I don't know if they did or not, but I'm going to find out. But um, I'm actually calling, and, you know, they're kind of, it's for the GSA schedule, mm-hmm. getting set up for yeah. that. Yeah. But here, another thing is, I have suppliers. Remember I told you that when I get ready to do a bed, they're on there? Mm-hmm. Well, that's just like Clayton County. And, you know, I got signed up and everything. There's, I can't even get it. I just go and look. You know, a lot of, I don't know where people, I can't understand how they do this. And and, and they'll be so low, mm-hmm. like for a box. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just can't, where do they get that from? It's like $1.32. Where do you get $2.32 for a box of gloves? You fill up the bag with trucks on <laughs> if you go in the drugstore, you go to CVS, I'm telling you, yeah. and look for some, some examples. Those are things are $19.90. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how do you go? I mean, come on. And everyone, every time, and I look at all my suppliers yeah. that are bidding against, you know, mm-hmm. quote normal, like, um, they're going to ask it all of them. I'm like, oh, I don't like all of y'all. <laughs> yeah. They can't even be. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I always talk about you're, you're not in business to be the lowest bidder, right? You're in business to be competitive and to be in business long term. So, and there are some situations where you just leave it alone. Obviously, something's getting the gloves. Where's the gloves? 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 Where's they may have a better sourcing center. They may use knockoffs. They may use, unless they're asking for original equipment manufacturer products, right. yeah, you're and not going to be, you know, able I to see that. Situation. I seen that, and I shouldn't have done that when I seen it was Westchester. Mm-hmm. Because Westchester is over here. They're expensive. Yeah. They, they don't lowball. And I got to connect to Westchester. Mm-hmm. But when I see the quote, I call them. <laughs> I'm like, okay, just forget it. Can't get in touch with the supplier. Mm-hmm. So I did go back. I did look to see who won the RFQ, and the, they weren't cheap. They were like twenty-five dollars a glove. These were certain gloves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. you know, so yeah, certain manufacturers and certain things. Yeah, if they request for a specific brand, then mm-hmm. there's unless there are. Doing something not right, but if they're if they're not specific to the brand, mm-hmm. it could be anybody, and you know it's hard to beat that. Yeah, so, so now I gotta keep my eye on for Westchester because I do have a direct connection. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Them, so. Yeah. All right. Other questions, Kathy? I know you're online with us. Uh, any questions from you, Kathy? Hello, Abraham, and everyone. Hey, Kathy. Hello. I had trouble connecting. I, I when I registered this morning, I'm like, where did the link go? And then once I got the link, it wouldn't connect. So I'm here. But I I don't have any questions right now. I was just trying to get it all in and listen to everyone else. Okay. All right. So uh, you can raise your hand. Uh, there's a little button to raise your hand if you have questions. I'll unmute you later. Okay. Thank you. All right. DBE for the state of Georgia. They ask for that because they're trying to see if you can use. Uh, they just want to know what other certification you have, and so you can use some of that for some. Sometimes they allow you to use that for your other certifications. Yeah. So, but uh, your situation, the answer is just no, and you know, and whenever you get it done, you can always update your sample file. I didn't see that link either. You want to get certified as a woman owned business? Uh, uh, yeah, that website is called. No. It sends you to the SBA site to register your, your DSBS profile, but 
it's not going to get you certified, though. You should try to come through it yourself, right? Yeah, so on your, you want us to look at your profile so we can all learn together? Okay, so come in here and put in your password. Do you remember your password login to Sam? Your username? Your password? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to teach all of you a password system, okay? Yeah, I'm going to teach you guys a password system, and this password system is going to save you headache. It's going to help you remember all your passwords forever. Unless, they're, like they say, you can't use a special symbol or it has to be something. But, but uh, I'm going to give you an example. Um, so, so this is an example. Doesn't matter what the website is, right? So if this is, if these are the websites you're going to, the password you want to create is two. So what you want is these six digits here. You want these six digits here to always be the same. So these six digits here will always be the same. And then, so I'll give you an example. So if, for example, your middle password this is your password in here. So this is um, cat five six six. Right. Those are your middle six digits. Cat five six six. That's your password. Well, over here, if you're on Facebook, you put F here, and then you put A here. Because it's FA, the first two letters here, right? And then at the end, you put K here, because that's the last letter here. And then you put a special symbol, uh, like there might be a dollar sign. Usually, usually I capitalize one letter, so it meets all the requirements. So this would be your password. FA, CAT, capital CAT, 566K, and then the dollar sign. So you meet all the requirements. They want eight. They want it to be eight digits long. They want it to have a special character. You have a special character. They want it to have a capital letter. You have a capital letter. They want you to have lowercase. You have lowercase, and they want you to have numbers. You have numbers. So on your next site on Gmail, guess what? It's G M C A T five six six and then L and then dollar sign. So. You always remember your password because your password is always the same. It's, but on every single website, it changes based on the website. Oh, it's just whatever number you want to come up with. These these six digits, these yellow six digits in the middle, is your own special one. Now, keep in mind that if you're using for like Facebook, Gmail, that's not that critical. You, you can use the same one. If you're using for banking purposes, don't use the same middle six. Use a a different one because that's for banking purposes. High level stuff. Use a different middle so that if somebody cracks your code on this here, they're not gonna be able to crack it somewhere else. Or you can you can tweak it a little bit from what I'm talking about. You know, you can use like the last letter first, right? You can use K from Facebook and then C A T. Oh no, K. Uh, K. Actually, you go the the last two right, so it's okay. OK cat 566, and then you go with FA, which is the first two, and the dollar sign. So you can reverse like that. So it's, you can use any system like this to just play around with it, come up with your own system. But, but this way, when you're on Facebook, you, it's still the same password because you know where your system is. If you're on Gmail, it's still the same system. You just kind of you know, take these the different letters of how you want to do it and, um, and do what you need to do. So does that make sense in terms of that? 
how to create a password system that you're always going to be able to remember every single website you go to. It's, di it's a different password for every website you go to, but it's really the same password. Uh, yeah, why don't you run down and then we'll go to cover some other questions. Other questions? Uh huh. Awesome. Woo! Your first some proposal submission. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. You no, you don't use the same one over and over. Well you use you use that as the template. And then based on the requirements of the new solicitation, you chop it up however you need to to fit the new project. Yeah. Yeah. And my next question is my next question is wow. I Mm -hmm. Yep, Kathy says she's using the password system, so great job, Kathy. Um, yeah, I have my, I use a very similar system. So, all right, so you ready to uh, go in? All right. And your secret password. Anytime you have to write down your password, it's not very secure. <laughs> because people, people can find a piece of paper one day and be able to tap the code on you. All right, so we're going to go in. So your question is, uh, now once you're in, right, so once you're in SAM, you want to go, you want to click on Entity Registration, right, because you're the user, so you want to go to Entity Registration. You didn't finish your profile, I assume. Okay, so I'm gonna go to existing entity and it's gonna pull you up down here. So I'm gonna click on your company here, TSD design, and I'm gonna hit, uh, oh, you're, oh yeah, you're not in there, so I have to go to, uh, yeah, maybe you did pending rows, yeah, it should be, it should allow us to go update. So maybe right now they're updating your profile. You must have submitted it. Oh, here it is. It just took a minute to load up. Yeah, so I'm going to go and update entity. Yeah, it's working progress. Yeah, so you can go there, but two is working progress. So as you go through this here, down here, right before you submit this here, there's going to be a little button that says, do you want to go to the SBA site to finish your profile there? And you click on the link and it's going to, it's going to take you to a new page. So that's how you register in the SBA site. Uh, it's right before you hit submit. So it doesn't show up right now, but after you do points of contact, after you finish all this here, there is going to be a little button right before submit that's going to allow you to go and do your SBA uh, profile. And it's going to take you to uh, the DSBS profile here. It's going to take you to a page similar to this here. And you'll finish off your profile over here. So since we're here, let's look at your profile and let's see how you did. So you refresh your data, so this is good. And I'm going to hit save and continue. We might as well go ahead and review your profile here, see how you look. Uh, your URL, uh, put www in front because you want to make it simple for these, for people to understand. Uh, I'm going to change it a little bit. Design. TSD design. 
Okay. All right. Save and continue. All right. Address. Save and continue. Save and continue. Now, some of these questions are really tricky. So this, if you have a, you know, like a parent company, the answer is no, you did that right. Some of them are local. Are you a successor to a predecessor that held a federal contract or grant? This is no. Uh, so your security level here, this is a not applicable. Because it doesn't pertain to your situation. Highest employee level, you don't have security clearance, so you just put an applicable here. Uh, is your business certified by state? And you said no, so that, that's what you were talking about, right? Uh, does your entity qualify as one of the following? So yeah, you're not a community development corporation. So just not applicable here. I assume she's not a community, yeah. Yeah, and then your need of these here. Now these here, Native American entity. Do you know why these are here? Designated for tribally owned corporation, Alaska Native or Hawaiian Native corporation. This is this is for federal contracting. This is what we call super eight A's. So you as an AA company, or when you get your AA certification, your threshold in terms of sole source authority is four million. If you are Native Hawaiian, or if you are you know uh, Alaska Native Corporation or Tribal Owned Corporation, guess what your threshold is? Wow. None. None. Zero. So unlimited sole source authority. Wow. That's awesome. So if you are a Native American uh, and your tribe owns the company, you can get your AA certification for the tribe because the company is owned by the tribe. And it, the company is working on behalf of the tribe. And when the tribe goes out there to go after a contract, the tribe can get a 